welcome to the Tripod. We break down the NRL every game, every week from a punting perspective. I'm Jacob Wynn and I am doing a six games into round four rapid reaction because uh, we've got a bit of time. We've got 20 minutes till the game kicks off tonight. Uh, Sharkies Raiders. Uh, it's a different different scheduling this weekend. Obviously, with the long weekend, I hope everyone's uh, had a great weekend so far. I uh, felt like it'd be too late to hit a recap tomorrow night, Monday night, and then back with a preview. So I'm just going to jump in. We've seen six games, uh, and as I said, a couple coming up. But let's talk about the six that we have seen. And it hasn't been the best round for me, only one and two on the best bets. We'll talk about uh, the couple that lost, but we got, we got one back uh, yesterday afternoon. But we're still in a position to have a profitable round with the mixed matchup in an extremely strong position. And then we've still got Winnie's Kitchen in play tomorrow for Eels Tigers. So what have you guys made of it so far? Uh, no new new barbecues, Rick. Uh, no new best bets either. Uh, but I do have my takeaways from the games and I'd love to hear yours as well. Uh, let's start with Panthers 22. Roosters 16, and my best bet was Roosters laying three and a half points, so that didn't go too well. The Panthers got the jump, and they were just relentless. Uh, I didn't see that coming. I mean, I knew that the Panthers would have to play absolutely at their A, a game to uh, to actually win this one, a little under strength, obviously, without the best player in the world. But they did just that, and the Roosters, yo-yo form, you know, great in round one and sloppy against Manly, and Manly haven't set the league on fire since then. Then unbelievable against South. Was that partly South making the Roosters look good? And then poor again. The Roosters were sloppy. I mean, we can all agree that Manu disallowed try that would have cut it maybe to 12-6, 12-4 with a kick to come. That was bogus. And then the uh, the Panthers got awarded a similar one later. They both should have been tries. But let's face it, it's a six-point margin. But the Roosters scored the final two tries, really, when the game was basically dead. They were down 16 the Roosters when they did score a couple. So let's just say Penrith outplayed the Roosters. I got it wrong. Best bet wrong. What an impressive win to do that without Cleary, without Fisher-Harris. Uh, Taruva gets a hat-trick. It's like, doesn't matter how many outside backs they lose, how good Taylor May looking in the centres. Uh, only other thing I can say in our group, well done to Matty, the undertaker with his line of the week. He went Roosters. He jumped on him before the Cleary news broke. On Monday, he got plus six and a half. And he saluted thanks to that final play of the game, basically, of 20 seconds to go, Tupo in the corner. Uh, you do cover if you've got the earliest of lines with the Roosters. But anything after that, like myself, uh, you copped an L. And the Roosters, you've got to question whether they are playing their best halves combination at the moment. But I just thought they were out physical. That was a vintage Penrith performance. On the screen, you can then see on Friday, Good Friday, we had... South Sydney getting their first win of the season. They just got past the Bulldogs 20 to 16. I will say that was unconvincing by Souths. They it was funny. I was watching it going, all right, if Souths are any hope here, revitalizing their season, they've got to start strong. They can't be chasing the game. They're gonna have to. We'll know a lot about Souths based on how they start. And then I was listening to the commentary, uh, Warren Ryan, and he's saying, uh, Warren Smith, sorry, he's saying. Oh, the Bulldogs are up and about. They've got all the energy. The Bunnies look like they're going to the Gallows. So I thought, yeah, that's not good signs for the Rabbitohs. But it was South Sydney getting the first couple of tries, leading 10-0 early. And then from there, you just think, all right, this is kind of the scenario I outlined in the preview. Like once Souths get their tails up, they'll steamroll and then they'll act like, oh, yeah, we're fine. But actually the dogs roared back into the game. And not only did the Bulldogs take a halftime lead, but I think they maybe lost the game in the few minutes before halftime. What I'm talking about is, and this could divide opinion, but for me, Jack Whiten puts a hip drop tackle on Jacob Preston. Not only that, it saves a try. So it's a massive moment, and they reckon it's fine. It gets a green light, because uh, like, there was even a moment where Preston was got up limping so the ref stopped the game. I thought, oh, clearly Bunker will chime in on this. No, nothing. Uh, well, am I wrong? Do I not understand what a hip drop was? And then about three minutes later, uh, dogs are on a break. You know, this is an opportunity. To, you're already leading the game and you've just scored uh, 12 unanswered points. You, you've got an opportunity to get more points. And it's as cynical as you like. I think it was Isaiah Tass. 
and he pulls down one of the doggies players after a break. They get up to play the ball. It might have been Taffy. He pulls him down again. Like, I, like what's a what's a professional foul if that's not one? Because if that's not a professional foul, then every team should do that. After a side makes a break, they get up to play the ball, rip them down again. Like, if that's not a professional foul, I don't know what is. So the Bunnies avoided Sinbin, and then I thought the Dogs made a really stupid decision not taking the two just because it was under 60 seconds to go. And look what ended up happening. The Dogs lose their game by four points. But if you had those extra two, Burton wouldn't have rushed the final conversion. I mean, he literally took the final conversion without a tee. He just sat it balancing in the grass. So I felt like they obviously left points on the table, uh, the Bulldogs. And in the second half, really, the story was the Bunnies were in front most of the way once they once they uh, responded, come out and scored the first try of the second half. I think they've done that. Well, they've done that every game apart from the Roosters one. But then the Bunnies had to do a lot of defending. And if you're going to give Souths any credit, uh, good defense, you know, strong, st- strong, solid defense when their backs were against the wall. And I do think part of that is that Canterbury don't have a lot of options. And I still don't think Hutchison is the right half back there. And I feel like a better side would have put the, the Rabbitohs away. And I think the Rabbitohs are a bit lucky that they ran into Canterbury because we know Canterbury's limited, especially. Uh, from an attacking sense. But if you were questioning, you know, rotten culture or uh, that Demetrio had lost the troops, you would have to at least concede that while the Bunnies were far from impressive, that they did knuckle down and and defend their way to a victory. So I'll give them that. But, uh, again, I said, you know, maybe it was a cheap line for Rabbitohs, but I'd wait to see, uh, wait to make, them show me something, wait till they prove it to me before I probably back them again with the line. And that late Bulldogs try uh, meant that the Rabbitohs now haven't covered a line, I think 11 straight NRL games. Let me know what you guys made of it. I got another game wrong on Friday night. I thought this would be really close. Broncos, Cowboys, but Brisbane won 38 to 12. It was uh, an entertaining game. It was some amazing tries from both sides, really. It was quite back and forth. I think it was like, it was only 20 to 12, and that included a late penalty awarded to Brisbane. Uh, at halftime, still anybody's game. If you've seen what Cowboys have done this year, particularly against Newcastle, against St. George, no lead was safe. Uh, but the second half, the Cowboys could not survive the amount of errors. And look, some of those errors were forced by Reynolds being back and what a, you know, what an exceptional kicking game he possesses. I mean, he had the all the back three of the Cowboys, all three of them, uh, spilled one of his bombs in the first half alone. So that's the story of the game. You know, the rain comes down early. Uh, it's slippery conditions. It's difficult conditions. But both sides were still very willing to toss it around, as you, as you could tell by, the, you know, over 30 points in the first half. But only one team couldn't hold it. You know, the Cowboys had three times the errors of Brisbane. And my best bet was either team one to ten, so once Brisbane's kind of up eight, you know, up 14, then really your bet becomes Cowboys plus 10 and a half. You need the Cowboys to get back in the game. But any chance they got, they spilled it. And meanwhile, Brisbane got plenty of extra opportunities because the Cowboys spilled it plenty of times in their own territory as well. So just way too many mistakes uh, to have any chance in that one. I can't even judge the ability of the Cowboys too much because, like I said, they just kept handing the footy back over to the Broncos. I don't know. Is it a case of one and two record Brisbane at home, just more desperate, more concentration than a three and O Cowboys side perhaps? You know, there were some stunning moments, stunning tries, as I said, but, like, uh, I guess you have to mention that that Dearden, uh, 80, 90-metre chase down, try saver, on Cobo, that was spectacular. One of the greatest try savers you'll ever see. But it doesn't count for much if you can't back it up. Yes, they did uh, survive that moment, but they dropped it North Queensland soon after and conceded. And the last thing I'll say is credit to Brisbane because I gave them every chance in this. I thought they had kind of 50-50 chance to win, but to win by more than 20 points against a really good opponent Without Reese Walsh or Payne Haas, like that is very impressive. And because the game was uh, nowhere near close, especially as Brisbane just kept extending and, and making North Queensland pay for those errors, uh, not only did my best bet lose, my better same gamer also lost. I had neither team to 30. I thought that would be such a great bet, 
when I seen the rain just pouring down early, but it didn't stop scoring. It felt like most of the errors were by teams in their own 20 and actually just inviting pressure in. As Joe says, uh, Raiders, Sharks, I've got to lean to Sharks, but I will tell you, the line feels fishy. That game's kicking off in 10 minutes, and I'm going to shoehorn our preview in before then. So let's move to Saturday where we actually had some joy on the betting front. I picked a bit of an unpopular one, but turned out to be right in the end with the Dragons 20 defeating Manly 12. My best bet was Dragons plus four and a half in the first half. And Manly scored the first try, but then the Dragons scored three unanswered. So it was 14-6 the Dragons led. So you never were really worried. Apart from 6-0, we weren't covering the halftime line. But after that, we only needed one Dragons try. We got three. Uh, And you'd have to say, Manly were virtually never in it. you know, so many errors against similar to North Queensland. But, I mean, I look at Tom Trevojevic and he, he's not that close to the player that was the best in the world two or three years ago. Um, it looks like he's maybe trying too hard. You know, Manly can't throw Tom the ball and, and him just create something for them, which was literally what they were able to do around 2020, 2021. Uh, in this case, Tom himself, Turbo, had five errors individually. He literally hurt Manly more than he helped them when he touched the ball. It seemed like he was in his head, like he was spilling it left, right, and centre. Uh, the, the other difference in this game too was the Dragons really seemed dialed in. And I agree with James that the Eagles looked flat, but it's a case of what you're allowed to do as well. And I do believe Flano knows Manly. I do believe that the Dragons took it personally, how badly they capitulated at home last week and let a golden opportunity slip against the Cows. So when they got in front of this one, they they looked really intent on uh, not letting that one go. So the Dragons were, yeah, just kept coming. You know, those forwards that all came back helped, but I felt like the best forward on the field was probably Jack DeBellin, who was pushed to the bench. But it says something when you can bolster your forward stocks and quality like JDB's off the bench. Uh, I also think, you know, I, I was saying hold your horses with Manly. You know, yeah, they look great in Vegas. It's, it's an unusual game. You don't know about the team's prep and we now know what Souths were going through. And, look, they were impressive against the Roosters. But, hey, uh, I've now picked the Manly game correct. At least three out of four had a best bet each and every week. And I just was not quite ready to say oh, they're definitely a top four side. I, or not, no one was saying they're definitely a top four side, but I had people telling me they're a top four side and definitely a final side. And I wasn't quite convinced yet. And so now, you know, just like North Queensland, maybe some of these teams and Sharks a week earlier, uh, you just can't write the story of this season quite so hastily. Uh, you know, t- teams are going to have good days and bad days, and we've seen a couple of sides come back to the pack. But another real positive out of that game was the mixed matchup played into Dragons Seagulls, and we had the game that I like for overs tomorrow, Parramatta West to have more points than Dragons Seagulls. And Manly versus St. George had a higher total than Parramatta West. So we got 235 with a 200 max stake. Now there's only been 32 points. So we're dead on there, even after pretty uh, high scoring first 20 minutes in that game. We've only got to exceed 32 points tomorrow, which I looked up is like $1.15 odds. So we're in a very strong position. So even when you look at our overall stats, we're 10 and 6 now. Uh, I combine like 100 stake example for mixed matchups and best bets. We're in profit a couple hundred bucks, but that's not including the pending bet tomorrow. I was not going to jinx it and claim it as a win yet, but we are in an absolute box seat tomorrow. More than 32 points, uh, we'll have another winner. That's 235 as well, so that would be nice. Uh, let's see the comments. Jacko, Dragon supporter, happy my boys got the win. Adrian. Manly looked flat. They went into the game thinking it was going to be easy. There could be a degree of that uh, overlooking the opponent. The Dragons are that type of side that, yeah, they won't wow you, but they, if you're not ready to play, uh, they're going to make you earn the victory. Uh, Colt, have other teams woken up to Tom Turbo, how he plays? I do wonder if there's a degree of that, that Manly caught teams napping with the frequency that was shifting the ball and obviously how much Luke Brooks was chiming in. It's like, how many levels have they got to that? Like once teams have kind of seen the new Manly style and game plan and you can prepare a bit better, then what counters have Manly got? You know, because you can't just throw it to Tom and expect him to do something. I actually felt like it, yeah, it hurt them uh, by being so reliant 
and Tommy just I honestly I I wondered if he'd like it had a head knock early or something. He wasn't right and that that symbolized the, the whole manly performance. Let's move to later on Saturday night as James says I feel bad for Clarky Titans not a first grade side. So Clarky, I checked in on him. He was at the zoo fight today. I, I didn't catch that one, but uh, he uh, went down in a split decision and uh, was a warrior effort. Let us know if you had thoughts on the fight. Clarky was in attendance in Vegas. He said he got up at five in the morning to check in on Titans uh, Dolphins and then kind of regretted doing so. The Finns, my Finns, won 30 to 14. The Titans were a similar boat to Souths, truth be told. And I said this on Tuesday. I think if I had to bet it, I would have played Souths and I would have played Titans. But I said, even if I might be right, let's just wait until they prove it. So, of course, what happens? The Titans shoot out to a 10 0 lead. And I say, yeah, this is classic. 0 oh, 2 at home, desperate. Yes, Tino was out, which is gut wrenching for the Titans. But Jaden Campbell was a big energy boost. And then Dave Fafita did play and he'd been named in the reserves. So there was every reason why the Titans could actually register their first win of the season. And once you're up 10 0, then you're thinking Titans are going to run away with this. At least that's what I thought. Um, other people may still not have been confident because I saw some people in the thread talking about live betting the Dolphins and you did very well if you did that. But look, what makes the final result worse for the Titans uh, losing by 16 points is that you can't even make the excuse of a bad start or being thrown out of your game plan, having to chase the game, compounding errors. Like you had everything going for you. You're up 10 nil, opportunities to extend it further and throw it away. All right, up 10-6. Plath gets sent to the sin bin for a hip drop tackle. So now you play the final 10 minutes of the first half against 12. Do you know how many sets the Titans completed when they had a man advantage? One. And it was a garbage 30-meter set inside their own half with a kick that just went straight up in the air that the Dolphins actually dropped and gave the Titans a golden opportunity to attack, and the Titans spilled it. And I just couldn't figure out these Titans' errors either. It wasn't like they were trying to shift, they were trying to push offloads, they were trying to promote the footy, the amount of times the Titans just dropped it, running it into the line with forwards and just spilled it. So then I talked about, you know, was Brisbane concentrating harder than the Cowboys? Is that why they didn't have nearly the number of errors? But where's the concentration? Where's the pride for the Titans? You know, I couldn't help but think watching the Titans capitulate in this. Like people like Clarkey or if you've seen uh, BKR Sport, like th those guys literally care more about how the Titans go than the Titans players by the looks of things. I mean, let's go back to round one. The Titans actually had the better of the game in the first half. It was only a two-point game against St. George. But what did they do second half? Four straight tries unanswered by St. George. Last week against the Bulldogs, six unanswered tries. You didn't score in the game. This is try after try after try. Conceded. In this one, the Dolphins scored five unanswered tries after the Titans got a 10-point lead. Like, what's wrong with this team? And that's at home. Uh, credit to the Redcliffe Kings. I mean, look, I thought Flegler led from the front. Herbie got his first try. They were so composed. They weren't flustered at all. And they won this going away, which improves their record to 3-0 and all time against the Titans. But uh, what a mess. You know, Des had time. Even though people could see positive signs, he was going to have a bit of time uh, to improve it. You didn't expect it to happen necessarily overnight, but you can even see he's stressed. I mean, that luscious head of hair is going to start to look more like mine if they don't turn it around quick smart. Uh, Colt, I want to hear what he's got to say. As a Titans member, we showed glimpses, but way too many schoolboy errors. There's no accountability or consequences with this club. We reward mediocrity. And that's what I talk about, desperation and concentration in these forwards. Like, do they all feel like my job's pretty safe? No one's knocking down the door to take my spot. This isn't Penrith. We're not a contending team, so I really don't have to. Like, there's just no way a team would be this careless with the ball if it was like an origin game or something. Like, you'd never see it. So what, are these players just so bad that they can't do it? To me, it's it's a mentality issue. Uh, so, you know, and I, I can't give them any credit for showing glimpses because every team in the NRL, it doesn't matter if you're the worst team in the comp, every team has little momentum swings and has good patches of play for five or ten minutes, but that means nothing. A mark of a good team is withstanding the tough periods and withstanding when momentum swings against you. And that's something that the, the Titans cannot do whatsoever. Unlike the unlike 
the uh, Knights, as Michael says, best bets hurt me hard this weekend. Yeah, we went we went one and two. I'm sorry, M- Michael. We're ten and six. Uh, but hopefully, I will do better next week and strive to do better each and every week. Uh, look, the Knights hung in there uh, to cap the final game that we have seen today. And let me know if I'm missing anything in Sharks Raiders. I think it just kicked off, so I'll be pretty swift. The Warriors beat the Knights twenty to twelve. After the line closed nine and a half. So another good example of if you wanted to play the Warriors, it was seven and a half early in the week. If you did want to play the Knights, it could have actually got as high as a 10. So depending on your execution, you could have won on either side. It looked to me like the Warriors might win this going away. I know there's a few Kiwi fans in the chat. Let us know what you made of it. I uh, saw JK say before RTS best fullback in the game. I don't know if I can go that far. What a fullback duel it was today, though. Vintage Roger. He had nearly 300 metres. I really do think you've got to move Nickel Cookstad to centre when you bring him back. Uh, we'll see how that goes. KP had his moments too, though. And what I have to say is, despite the fact that New Zealand were in control for most of this game, leading by 12 early, even when the Knights responded, the Warriors were the first to score second half, up 18-6. And when the Warriors got a penalty to make it 20 to 6, and that's a 14 point, you know, three score lead with under 10 to go, you'd say, yeah, it's game over. But the Knights actually struck back and then made a full length of the field line break, nearly scored again and and went close. So some credit to Newcastle for hanging tough. You know, the tough start to the year for the Knights. Uh, only one and three, and a couple of games could have gone, could have gone better for sure. But at least, you know, that's a tough environment when things go against you and New Zealand's tails were up. But like I said, uh, I thought Rog was leading the way. I had one other note, um, if you if we rewind to the Titans-Dolphins game, uh, Nicole's been giving us a try score every week. He had Nichols at $11 anytime try score. If you watched it, he had one that he was shut down just short of the line and another that he actually got over the line but grounded it short and rolled it. Uh you could not have come any closer if you were on Nichols. So that one hurts. Uh, sorry, Nicole. Okay, Sharks Raiders has kicked off. Let's all go and enjoy it. I thought, geez, three and a half, I could only play Cronulla, but why is this line so short? I feel like maybe the Raiders make this ugly, make it interesting. And I, and I love seeing a, a tight contest. So I hope we get that tonight. I hope everyone enjoys tomorrow if you had it off. You can still get on my Winnie's Kitchen multi. Same gamer on Dabble. Uh, at $11. And remember, the mixed matchup is into $1.16. Hopefully, plenty of you guys are riding that with me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Back Tuesday, with or without Clarkie. We'll see how he gets uh, gets on with his travels home. Thanks, everybody. Hope you didn't mind the early show. Recapping 75% of the round. Hope you enjoy the rest. Best of luck. And Lego.